The Twilight Council. Farming? Really? A mayor of your talents? A tall, shapely young mare slowly trots the long hallway that connects her tower to the castle proper. The evening sun filtered through the many stained glass windows which flanked either side of her, each one of which depicted a smiling pony of some kind, who had been Twilight Sparkle's personal protege at one point. Burn Willow knew each one of their names, though not because her teacher had instructed her to learn them, but rather simple curiosity had driven her. Their stories were fascinating to the young students, and knowing that she was but one of a long line of them made her proud. The other students varied greatly in appearance, and though they were mostly ponies, there was even a griffin, a minotaur, as well as a short red dragon. The young earth pony could have spent hours simply observing the ancient windows, watching as they shifted from one scene to another. Each time they changed, they displayed another important point of the other students' history, including her own. Though that particular window only changed once, going from a smiling younger version of herself to the much older one depicting when she had helped bring back life to a particularly nasty part of the Badlands. Pride swelled in her chest, and for a moment she stood a little straighter, her short curly purple and blue mane bouncing ever so slightly. Pushing those thoughts from her mind, the pony continued towards her destination, remembering that she was here for a reason. Namely to ask Twilight when she would have time to help her with a spell the Earth Pony had been working on for the past few days. Sure, the Alicorn was busy with her monthly secret staff meeting, but it couldn't be that important, right? After all, Twilight always said that Burn Willow could interrupt her meeting so long as she kept such disruptions brief. After passing through the hall, she quickly approached the door that she knew Twilight resided within. No guards stood outside, though they had long since been rendered obsolete by the castle's automated security, and had been relegated to serve as tour guides. The young ponies have hovered over the handle, wondering if it was really okay for her to interrupt a meeting that she was warned against intruding on. In the end, her curiosity got the best of her, and after undoing the rather antiquated locking spell placed on the door, she hesitantly pulled it open. Gazing within, Burn Willow was surprised to find the usual ivory columns of Canterlot Castle being replaced with crystal. Crystal which reminded her of the Friendship Castle, a place that no one had stepped within for nearly two centuries at this point. Voices echoed off the walls, and the pony slipped quickly inside, shutting the door behind her before trotting deeper down the hallway. Are you welcome in the Coco? That would never work! Claimed a distant, echoing voice that sounded like it was produced by the undulations of some strange liquid. The fella clearly knows that he did wrong. Countered a slow, ponderous tone that reverberated off the walls. Really, darling, is it that far-fetched to believe that he has learned from his mistakes? Countered another strange voice, which sounded weirdly alien in a way Burn Willow couldn't quite explain. It was a pinky promise! Exclaimed a rather brash tone that overlapped with itself, as if the speaker was so fast that they were getting ahead of their own words. You know folks these days don't understand the significance of the promise. Whispered an odd echoey voice. Girls, please. Doom Shadow may have broken a pinky promise, but he's learned his lesson. The familiar tone of Equestria's current princess claimed. Besides, it's what my character would do. Burn Willow crept forward until she reached a second door, pulling it open just enough to see through the crack, only to immediately gasp in surprise when she noticed that her mentor and current ruler of Equestria was sitting at a table with five beings which could only be described as, well, monsters. Unfortunately for her, Burn Willow was noticed almost immediately, with Twilight turning towards her and frowning in disappointment. Burn Willow, what did I say about coming in here? Twilight demanded. To not do that? But it was also fine to interrupt if I only wanted to ask you a small question. Brunwella replied, her gaze flicking to the five strangers. Um, so who are they? Twilight sighed, and removed the cartoonish wizard hat from her head before setting it aside. Well, I suppose introductions are in order. A strange mass of pink surged from its chair, and the vaguely pony-shaped creature bouncing over to the earth pony and extending a hoof. Hey there, I'm Pinkie Pie, and you must be Burn Willow, Twilight's newest student. You have no idea how excited I am to finally meet you! Exclaimed the creature in a slightly gurgled tone. Burn Willow shook the offered hoof awkwardly, only to find that her limb was covered in something sweat-smelling the second it was returned to her. It's just ice icing. Exclaimed a strange rainbow mane pegasus mare who seemed to be rapidly phasing in and out of reality, body distorting constantly. It's nice to meet you, Pinkie Pie, even though I thought that you were dead. Burn Willow remarked in a dry tone, her gaze shifting to Twilight. Then, Twilight nodded. 
The answer is a little more complicated than what you're likely imagining. Suffice to say that most of my old friends have, for one reason or another, been brought back from the dead. Or went so fa fast that they slipped out of the fl flow of time itself! Shouted the pony, Burn Willow assumed was Rainbow Dash, who pumped a hoof into the air. Yes, well, not all of us were so lucky as to break reality. Deadpan, the half-rotted remains of rarity in her strange tone of voice. You didn't use necromancy to- Burnwilla began, only to wince and stop herself. Twilight shook her head. None of this was my doing, though I suppose a little explanation is in order. Pinky, why don't you start? Oh, great idea! Exclaimed a bouncing mass of pink icing. I had, like, all of Discard's magic for like a minute and totally accidentally turned myself into icing. It's fine though, because I never got bad, and since I can make a near limitless amount of sugary goodness, I can control 90% of the frosting industry. Wait, so Pinky's super special fun time icing is made from you? Burnwallow asked, her stomach churning at the thought. Yep, doodle. But don't worry, it's not like I can feel each individual particle of icing as it slides down your throat and gets broken down into your belly. Pinkie Pie exclaimed before bouncing back over to her seat. I told you not to say it like that. Now she's even more crossed out. Whispered the ghostly shade of Fluttershy. Why don't we just keep this going? Um, what about you, Applejack? Twilight pressed, glancing expectantly at the skeleton partially consumed by a towering apple tree. Applejack then nodded her great green head in agreement. In Lafa tended to the many trays of the family orchard with love and attention. A wistful look crossed the strange being's partially skeletal, mostly plant-covered face. I named each and every one of those trees and cared for them as if they were family. Applejack took a long pause, her green eyes staring off into the distance. <sighs> well, I could remember like it was just yesterday. Up at the crack of dawn to water Herbert, Josh, Baker, while we c- Get it! You like tree trees Rainbow Dash shouted, the pony leaping into the air, only to suddenly return to her seat as if she had never left. The undead plant monster then nodded its head. I never really had any kids to call my own. Tricks had passed before we could even really try, so I took to treating the trees like they were my own flesh and blood. And as it turns out, if you're good enough friends with one, they'll do their best to make sure that you stay with them. Forever. Burn Willow blinked as the skeleton stroked the trunk growing out of her neck. That... that shouldn't be possible, but... then again, that seems to be the norm around here. She muttered. Yes, well, my friends are rather unique. Wouldn't you say so, Fluttershy? Twilight offered. Ooh, yes. Exclaimed the ghost, who smiled when she turned to Burn Willow. My story is much like Applejack's. After my accidents, the animals can let me go, so they brought me back and made sure that I could never get hurt again. <laughs> Sweet little things. How? Burn Willow questioned while rubbing her temples. Animals don't even have magic. They have a sort of gestalt consciousness, though, which does have magic. Twilight pointed out. Magic strong enough that should it be put to use could alter the fabric of reality itself. Burn Willow sighed. How does that even happen? Y you know what? I don't even want to know. It's not that complicated, darling. After all, we live in a world with chaos gods and ancient monsters born before this reality even came into existence. Rarity pointed out. Oh, so let me guess, you're not a zombie then and were actually brought back by some sort of ancient artifact or the love of your clothes. Burn Willow deadpanned, and Rarity chuckled. Oh no, I am indeed a lich born from the twisted machinations of dark magic and brought back from death's embrace by the power of necromancy. Burn Willow's jaw hung open. However, Twilight merely sighed. It was an accident. An accident? Shrieked the younger pony. Look, it was this whole thing because she was focused on creating these clothes, and then she died. Twilight poorly explained. How is that even possible? Burnwilla retorted. That's what what I said! Exclaimed Rainbow Dash, who suddenly appeared next to Burnwillow. They didn't e even tell you the best part, though. She di died because she forgot to eat. Yes, well, that is no longer a concern of mine. Rarity remarked in a slightly dismissive tone. The younger pony sighed. And let me guess. You've closed down Friendship Castle in order to give them a place to live without scaring the public, while probably giving them disguises. Twilight smiled and clapped her hooves together excitedly. Wonderful deduction, Burnwillow. It's how I can keep running Sugar Cube Corner LLC! Pinkie Pie exclaimed. And how I can keep watch over the Everfree. Fluttershy offered. And the farm. Applejack added. As well as my 37 boutiques. Rarity remarked in a proud tone. 
Y'all need to relax, relax, relax more. Rainbow Dash repeated before banging a hoof upside her head. You should do what I do and spend each day on a different continent. Well, not all of us can fly through the fabric of reality. Applejack droned. Through, through the what? Burn Willow collapsed into a heap, her curly mane slowly turning straight one hair at a time. Oh dear, it seems I'll be broken her, remarked Rarity. Um, is this a bad time? Asked a nervous tone. Everyone turned to the entrance where a crystal golem shaped like shining armor stood. Burn Willow groaned and threw up her hooves. That's it! That's it! I quit! I'm going back to my village to be a farmer! Well, good on you, kid. Applejack exclaimed. No, wait! Hold on! What about your love of learning? Twilight shouted, the alicorn scrambling after her students. I don't care anymore! This is too much for me! The pony paused at the entrance and gave the room a wave. Goodbye, everyone! I'll remember you all in therapy! When the door slammed shut, Twilight sighed. Ah, uh, damn. It's the third one this decade. So, are we go going to finish our ogres in OBS ga game or what? Rainbow Dash demanded, having appeared back in her chair. Uh, well, you might as well, since our paladin is back. Twilight murmured. Though, I should probably go talk to my students. Oh, well, that's too bad. I brought hayburgers. Shining Armor replied, pulling several bags of takeout from a pocket dimension. Uh, you know what? She's probably fine. Twilight muttered, sitting back down. I wonder if Lester Dawn had to deal with this amount of chaos when she was being taught by Twilight. Because if so, they deserve a Medal of Honor. Now let's get on to our sane donators. Top donators Dash of Evergreen, Peter Coltard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, and Pony Man. Courier Crucii, Strix, Zar630, Narwhals, Delta Omega, RuneScythe9852, Dospo, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Hunter Norman, Austin Rowland, Secret Moon, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brethren Mordred, Cerberus, Goulash Eating Hazar, Ron and Wandering, Ender I 63, Random Person Man Guy, Easy, Starlight Glimmer, Squiddy Boy, David E. Sanchez, Soul Dragon, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Alex F., Rainbow Dash, Teal K. Anderson, TV Killer, John Becker, Leon Reynolds, Raven Speedster, Zach Raquel, Mystery CU, Leslie Prickett, Edgar Garcia, One Kingdom One, Nissa Rusan, Vizuri, Dyslexic Character Sheets, and Just for Random Boy. Thank you all so much for watching my student disappear, and I'll see you in the next crazy adventure. Oh, and also live life to the fullest.